This video is um, really introduces an idea, important idea in stats, about the distinction between non-parametric tests or parametric tests. Uh, the target audience really is further maths students in the UK studying for OCRA course, but it might be useful for other people, who knows. Um, it really is pre-university, um, so if anyone comes to see this and there's something wrong, please do add into the comments at the bottom. I'm not a statistician particularly, um, so I'm hoping that it will nevertheless be useful certainly to, to our students in the, uh, who are studying for OCRA further maths. Okay, um, what's the distinction between non-parametric tests and parametric? I think the word sometimes can put us off a little bit. I mean, we can look at, I've written a list of the tests that we've already done, although we haven't done student t-tests, I've just put it in there for completeness, um, which all involve testing against a certain unknown population parameter. Okay, that's not to say that this doesn't, uh, isn't a feature of non-parametric tests, so it can be a little bit deceptive, and that's, this is where the technical nature of this uh, I'll be honest, it's a little bit beyond me as well. Perhaps um, someone can enlighten me. But uh, it is certainly, if, you, if we're testing against a population parameter, or if we're not testing against a population to that parameter like that, then we, um, we are dealing with a non-parametric test. But, for example, examples we're going to do in a moment, uh, in future videos, involve making a null hypothesis against the median, which is a parameter. So I think... But I prefer to think of it as a distribution pretest. So we're not making as many, or in some tests, many, uh, um, or any distribution pretest is a, another word for per parametric test, non parametric test. So, so we're not making specific or very we're making this we're not making as many assumptions about the parent distribution or, or whatever than we are with the parametric test let me just say we're not making any assumptions but we're certainly it's certainly got nothing to do with the normal distribution okay so we're not making assumptions that the parent distribution is normally distributed and we're certainly not applying the central limit theorem so it's not really, the parent distribution is not normally distributed, that's certainly the case. But occasionally we are, so one of the tests, for example, we will do, we're assuming that the distribution is symmetrical. But it can be, any, and lots of types of distributions are symmetrical, but we're not, we, we are making that assumption. So it's not true to say we're not making any assumptions for non-parametric tests. But we're making less specific ones and we're making more general kind of assumptions if we are making them at all. Okay, so that's the distinction. So I've drawn this list up because, uh, say, for those of you studying for uh, further maths and studying from this textbook, it's a really great textbook, by the way. I don't want to um, show any disrespect to that textbook. It, but you can get the impression that the only non-parametric tests are the tests covered at the end because there's a chapter at the end talked about non-parametric tests as though some of the tests before, it is explained, explained before, but, but some of the tests before um, are, uh, don't fit into that category. But they do. Chi-squared is a non-parametric test. Well, in many cases, with contingency tables, it's not even numeric. You talk about the numbers of you know, different types of things and comparing ratios and things like that. So it's not the data isn't, can't, by definition, we, it's distribution free because it's not even numeric, the original data. So there's, that's kind of square for you. Perhaps the most useful distinction though, which is where, where our first, first video will, will start on, well, the video following this, will be our Spearman's rank. These two are all our Pearson's uh, product moment correlation coefficient. This is the parametric verse and then this is the non-parametric version of the test and we'll, we'll actually in the, in the video following this look at the distinction between those two and why we would choose to do one or the other because it's a useful a useful kind of contrast to make because it kind of it 
gives us a very um, a good background into what the difference between these two tests are and why we might choose one test as opposed to another. So uh, we're going to start off with that and these refer to bivariate data. So the Spearman's rank uh, makes no assumptions about the bivariate data whereas the product moment correlation coefficient assumes that the data is bivariately normally distributed so that's a big assumption. So you know we've got um, you know, we've got, we've got the contrast between those two. So we're going to start off with that. And then we're going to do a few more tests, which are non-map parametric. Uh, the first one, probably the most crude of them, but uh, can be useful in certain instances, is a sign test. That's testing against the median. In fact, they're all testing against the median, really. Um, and then we're going to do something called the Wilcoxon rank sum uh, rank sign test and then we're going to do another version of the Wilcoxon another test from Wilcoxon which is a rank sum test and now I say typically most of these involve testing around the median and but with this one, for example, we are. This makes no assumptions about the distribution whatsoever. Whereas this one does assume it's symmetrical. So there is, as, as I said before, it doesn't mean there's no assumptions made. It's just fewer and less specific, and certainly nothing to do with normal distribution. So there we go. So that's um, that's uh, the distinction between two. We're going to do those three. Um, in a series of follow-up videos after we've reminded ourselves about Pearson's and Spearman's and the contrast between those two. But we, we're not going to stop there because we're also going to actually talk about paired data. This isn't really to do with parametric tests in itself, not at all really. We, we just happen to have not looked at paired data and the OCRA spec only really looks at paired data in non-parametric cases but there are many cases where we could pair data with some of these so that um, the paired data test could also be applied uh, to the normal distribution or the student t-test um, so yeah it's just something that happens to be fitted in at the end there and now what do we mean by paired data well for example if we're talking about we if we have a population of people who undergo a certain diet and we want to know the effect of that diet on them well obviously the same person is in the population for one as a population for the other so we it makes sense to pair that the, the data together to look at the difference individual differences for each of them and if when we can pair data we should do because much more the test will be much more powerful if we do so we will come across some examples of pairing with those two tests there so that will be a later video coming on after that um, and then we're going to talk about some normal approximations as well so quite a lot to cover really lots of bits and pieces so we're going to talk about the normal approximation to the uh, to the involved with these tests here with these two tests here we're going to talk about the normal approximation to those and that will finish it all off at the end so we'll have done by then okay so we're nearly done the only one one thing i probably wouldn't want to finish off uh without talking about is why which one would we choose um, and why would we choose one to the other? Well, that's one of the reasons why start, we're going to start with this video, a video talking about those two, because hopefully once you look to that, you can see why you might choose one as opposed to the other. But more generally, if we, if for a non-parametric test, we've got, if we really can't make those assumptions about the parent population, then that's going to be our option, and op only options, particularly if the sample size is small and the central li limit theorem can't be applied in any way, then we, we've got to go with non-parametric. But I suppose the question is, why wouldn't you always do that? Because isn't that a more, because it's more cautious thing to do? And the answer is probably not. Although applied statisticians will disagree on which tests should be used in which circumstances. But probably, the answer is probably not, because if you always did non-parametric tests, you are more likely to waste your time, frankly. You're, you're more likely to come, to come 
make what's called a type 2 error, in other words, to not reject the null hypothesis when you should be rejecting it. So something significant really is there, but the non-parametric test hasn't picked it up, whereas the parametric test would. So if we can you know, go with the assumptions made with these tests, it's often a better thing to do because the test is more powerful. And that means it has greater power, basically means it is less likely to make a type 2 error, which means basically it's less likely that you will incorrectly reject the null hypothesis. I think colloquially that's sometimes called as false negative, though I don't tend to use those terms because it's so easy to get it the wrong way around. I'm pretty sure we're talking about a false negative there for type 2 error much less likely to happen with a parametric test. So if we can go with these assumptions that are made about it being normally distributed or we're applying a central lim limit theorem, that's often a better way to go. Okay, but non-parametric tests certainly have their place. Um, right, one last thing, Wilcox thought, this is for um, the biologists and geographers and psychologists in the UK, they tend to talk about man with me which is an equivalent test to Wilcox and Rank sum test. They're not exactly the same process apparently, but it basically the tests are directly equivalent, so they do they do exactly the same thing. Okay, so hopefully you find uh, that informative, and um, I just want a bit of context for those um, t taking A level, and hopefully it might give you something to hang things on if you go further on to do a stats course at university. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.